One nice thing about living in Africa is that when I went back to visit the United States, I got to stop in Europe for free. One year I wrote my parents and said I was coming to visit them, but I didn't tell them I was going to stop in Antwerp, Belgium on the way back home. And I wanted to stop in Antwerp because my grandmother was born there. And I was going to get her birth certificate and take it back to my mom as a surprise. So I flew to Belgium, checked into a hotel in Antwerp, and that little brochure with a map of the city, and there were the city archives. I said, okay, that must be where the birth certificate is. So the next morning, I went to a medieval building with this enormous, enormous wooden door. And this was the archives. The door had no handle, no doorknob, no door knocker. I stood there, I didn't know what to do. It's medieval, maybe I should find a battering ram, and these guys who were repairing the street would help me knock the door down. But one of the guys repairing the street noticed my dilemma and came over and pushed a doorbell. And this, re this rectangular opening appeared in this giant medieval door, and I stepped inside. I'm inside the Antwerp City Archives, and the first thing I notice is that someone is running towards me, and he's gesturing, and he's yelling at me in Flemish, Rouse! 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 I got the idea that he didn't want me in that building. Uh, but I was going to stand my ground because I wanted my grandmother's birth certificate. He's, he's getting closer. I notice he has a three-piece suit on, and it doesn't fit him. But the pieces don't fit him in different ways. Like the, the pants are too short, and the, and the arms are too long, and, and the vest is too tight. And I stand my ground. And even stand my ground, he gets right up to me, and I discover he has the worst case of halitosis I've experienced in my life. And I, I walk to my grandmother's birth certificate in 1886, and he says that I'm in the wrong building. And he gladly escorts me out through this opening before I could contaminate his archives and uh, sends me off to the general records office, which is just a plain, ordinary Belgian government building. And I went to the clerk, and I thought, maybe I impressed the clerk with how ancient this birth certificate was, 1886, but to him it was just in a day's work, and I filled out the form, and I gave him the money, and then he announced that he couldn't get me the certificate, he had to mail it. So I gave him my mother's mailing address, and gave, gave him money and everything, and um, off I went to the States. Well, when I was visiting my parents, a letter arrived from Antwerp, my mother immediately knew what it was. And we opened it up, and there was the birth certificate in Flemish, in handwritten Flemish, in handwritten 19th century Flemish. So we had no idea what it said. But it was attributed to my grandmother. She had a tough life uh, after she was born in Belgium. Um, her, her father was a uh, bosun for transatlantic shipping, and they moved to Brooklyn. Um, my great-grandparents great had four more children, all of them daughters. When my grandmother was eight, her mother died, and she had to raise her sisters as if she were the mother. Then as she matured, she fell in love with a man who would not marry her until both his parents died because he wanted to take care of them in their old age, so she had to wait for his parents to die. Then they got married, she gave birth to twins, which of course is never easy. She had married a man who was a dock worker uh, um, at, at the uh, Brooklyn Navy Yards, and he was a labor radical, very, very often on strike, bringing no income into the family. She had to support them by doing sewing. But I really admired my grandma because she was a rebel. She defied her father. Her father told all his five daughters that they must marry Swedes. And when I heard this, and I never met the man, obviously, but I said, what a bigot, what a hard-hearted man. And then how, how great it was that my grandmother defied him and married this man, uh, my grandfather, who was of German descent. Anyway, Years later, I came across somebody who could read 19th century handwritten Flemish and paid him to translate this birth certificate. And the birth certificate 
told me two stories. The first story is great grandma and the birth of her first child in a city she didn't know very well. In Antwerp in 1886, to get a birth certificate, you had to take your baby to City Hall and say, here's the baby, and they would fill out the, the birth certificate. And you had to bring witnesses. She brought two men, not her husband. Her husband was off at sea. So she had given birth by herself, basically, in Antwerp. She brought two men, one of whom was illiterate. So on the birth certificate, you see the first man's name. Second man has an X, and next to the X is the city clerk's um, verification of the X. So I pictured great grandma alone with her first child in Antwerp, 1886. Then I looked at where great grandpa was born, which was Sweden. And to my surprise, great grandma was born in Denmark. And it all became clear. In the 19th century, Sweden was dirt poor, and thousands and thousands of Swedes left Sweden and went to Denmark, where they took menial jobs and they were treated like dirt. And you can see this in Academy Award winning film from 1987 called Pella the Conqueror, stars Max von Sydow as a Dane, sorry, as a Swede, who goes to Denmark and gets treated like dirt. So now I saw the marriage of my great-grandmother to my great-grandfather was more than a marriage outside of ethnicities. It was a marriage of ostracism. Because she married my great-grandfather, she had to leave her homeland. That sent them on to Belgium, eventually to Brooklyn. And then I realized my great-grandfather was not a bigot, not hard-hearted. He was considerate and thoughtful because he saw the pain that his wife went through because of the marriage, and he did not want any of his daughters to experience that pain. <laughs>